now we are going to discuss the basic concepts of macroeconomics so if you look at class 12th there are two books of economics in class 12th one is the macroeconomics and the second is microeconomics all right now not all the chapters of microeconomics are important and in fact the microeconomics is not so important for the examination point of view but last year this year in fact one question was asked from the microeconomics as well so we need to focus on few concepts of microeconomics but macroeconomics you are required to cover in fact if you look at the syllabus the syllabus for foundation courses okay so if you look at the syllabus everything that is mentioned in the syllabus is a part of macroeconomics because you will become a civil servant and a civil servant is required to make policies at a broader level it has to make policies for the government draft policies making policy is the prerogative of parliament but you will be drafting the policy and for you the concern is the entire economy the whole economy not the one unit of it you don't have to work for reliance you don't have to work for infosys you don't have to work for wipro so therefore microeconomics is not very important for the civil service services aspirants in fact even in the economics syllabus the the the, the optional subject the microeconomics is not emphasized it is the macroeconomics that you need to deal with so therefore we will of course discuss some of the concepts of microeconomics as well but we will uh, 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 go detail into the macroeconomics we'll discuss lot of issues in macroeconomics so therefore since this is the last class and this part of the syllabus is coincided with the syllabus that we have designed for foundation course so i'll not be able to cover the entire book it's not possible in one day <coughs> but whatever i discuss as part of the foundation course all the concepts of ncrts are covered all right so don't worry about any concept so far only those aspects which are not mentioned in the uh, in in the foundation course have been covered okay the syllabus with related to the macro economics the entire syllabus entire things that is uh, that uh, that is mentioned in your book will be covered as part of the foundation course got that point is the point clear to everyone all right so as part of this since this is a last class we'll cover the basic concepts some of the basic concepts of macro economics all right so first of all you understood the one thing that why do we need to study macro economics especially for the civil service uh, services because you have to make policies at the broader level your policies will not be confined to a single unit of economics your policies will be going to affect the entire sector of the economy every sector of the economy whether it is a household sector whether it is a public sector private sector or financial sector or production sector every sector will get affected by the policies that that you will be drafting tomorrow so therefore the focus must be on the macro economics to understand the macro so difference between the micro and macro macro the meaning of macro is a broader it includes the aggregate economy so when we talk about the aggregate economy the entire economy or the whole economy that is related to the macro economy 
when we talk about a particular unit, its production pattern, reliance production pattern, its rate of return, its saving, its interest, and so many things. So when the unit analysis of uh, when the when the study of analysis is a unit, a single unit, then it is considered as part of microeconomics. So microeconomics deals with a particular or individual unit in the economy, whereas a macroeconomics deals with the entire economy, aggregate economy, the whole economy. Okay, so that is the difference between. So when we talk about the entire economy, every sectors of the economy, we will be talking about the macroeconomics. So for example, aggregate demand, demand, if I say demand here, what does it mean? The demand in the economy, aggregate demand in the economy, right? If I say supply, so aggregate supply in the economy, overall demand or overall supply in the economy. When I say GDP, GDP is what? GDP is the figure of entire country. So it's a production value of all the goods and services produced in the country. All right. So it's not the production of goods and services to a single unit. So therefore, macroeconomics deals with the issues and all the issues that we have seen in our syllabus, be it inflation, be it employment, unemployment, be it theory of demand or demand and supply in the economy. All these are subject of concern for macroeconomics, whether it is external sector, monetary policy, fiscal policy. These are all subject to economic, macroeconomic policies or macroeconomic. Whereas a microeconomic deals with a particular unit in the economy. So there can be one unit in the economy for reliance or emphasis. These are individual unit. So when our subject, when we study the production pattern of a particular company, it's a return that we do study in microeconomics. All right. So therefore, if you have done your MBA, you serve to the private player. So therefore, the major emphasis on the microeconomics. Whereas, if you look at the syllabus of civil services, in that case, you need to deal with macroeconomics. All right. So, major point of difference, I told you. So, major point of difference, this is the major point of difference you can see. It deals with the individual market, as I said. The point is the main point is this individual market. So, microeconomics deals with the individual market. Macroeconomics deals with the whole market, the entire market. It deals with the aggregate demand, aggregate supply in the economy, whereas it deals with the individual consumer's behavior. Why the particular consumer is behaving in a particular way? Whereas it deals with the behavior of the entire population. All right. So it deals with the behavior of entire population, whereas it deals with uh, behavior of an individual. Individual labor market, it deals with the entire employment opportunity or scenario in the country. It will not talk about the labor market of one industry. It will talk about the labor market of, when I say labor market, it deals with the general labor market. Labor market of all, all the goods. So, it, will, it deals with the issues such as inflation. And whereas microeconomics deals with the effect on price of a goods. For example, the price of aluminum has gone up. That is a subject of study for microeconomics. Whereas the price of all the goods and services are increasing in the economy. As a result, the general level of prices, if it is increasing in the economy, that is a subject of study for macroeconomics. That is referred as inflation. All right. So the difference between the microeconomics and macroeconomics is mainly about the individual unit and it is about the aggregate economy or entire economy. 
so you will have to talk about the entire economy you will be representing representing for the entire economy all right so that is the major difference between the microeconomics and macroeconomics this is not something that you are required to do but in general the macroeconomics is considered as a theory of economic fluctuation and economic growth so major concern of the macro economy is what the economic growth economic growth and in fact the government for government there is always a contradiction between the economic growth and inflation there is always a contradiction between economic growth and inflation so this is a subject of study for macro economics if you are looking for the growth of the economy so gdp you have seen in the syllabus national income as part of the national income the gdp is a concept we will be learning about it all right so gdp so entire economy so when we talk about the growth of the economy this is dealt in the macroeconomics and when we talk about the macroeconomics the focus is on the economic growth focus is on maintaining inflation focus is on providing employment opportunity focus is on maintaining balance of payment focus is on resource distribution focus is on taxation policies the borrowing policies of the government these are the things that we will discuss about when we discuss in the context of the macro economics so the major concern of macro economics is what the growth of the country and all the things revolved around this concept of economic growth if we talk about the economic growth where the resources will come from that is done through the resource mobilization by the government through taxation and borrowing where the expenditure will be done so that the government can increase the uh, the, the the growth in the country or can government can increase the income of the people or per capita income of the individual gets increase in the economy so distribution is done also in accordance with that so distribution of resources whether it is about the distribution of resources or these are all related to economic growth so therefore the macro economics is also considered theory of economic fluctuations and economic growth okay now this theory of there are many theories we don't need to understand need to know this there are many theories the theories are not important part of your syllabus i've just uh, in order to tell you there are many theories of economic growth and everyone has its own point of view regarding the growth for example we all have a op opinion you know uh, the social science the beauty of social science is that the subject has a different opinion one can have different opinion on different issues it's different from the science the science the things are defined and it goes as uh, according to that okay so theories are there and then you have to follow the same theory you have to apply the same theory and this will be applied in every situation hardly you will find any exceptions of course there are some exceptions but you will hardly find so universal application of those theories but when it comes to the social sciences there is no universal application of theories there are many dimensions to look at the same problem some may look it from different perspective some may look in, into different perspective for example poverty some may call it it is because somebody is lazy that's why some somebody is poor there is one view the other view is that because employment opportunity is not available that's why somebody is poor different perspective so regarding the macro economics also we have a different perspective and these perspectives are reflected by different school of thoughts okay now what we are going to discuss we will mainly discuss about the 
Keynesian economics. When we talk about the macroeconomics, the macroeconomics got a push with the Keynesian economics and John Maynard Keynes. John Maynard Keynes advocated the role of government in economy. Otherwise, in the liberal economy, in the liberal economy, every actor, there are four actors in the economy. What are those four actors? Yes, anybody? Yes, farm, government, household, and the external sector. Okay, trader. These are the four actors. And every actor has their own specific function. That is how the monetary policy or, or that is how the economic system used to work. That is known as a laissez faire. So the government, uh, government used to make no intervention in the market prior to 1929. So in 1929, before 1929, in the capitalist system, be it United States, England or Europe, there was a liberal economy. And in liberal economy, the government does not make intervention in the market. It leaves the market on its own. So it decides the price and the distribution, resource distribution and everything. Government doesn't make any intervention because the government has one specific role of regulation only. So it restricts itself to the regulation only, not to enter into the production or trying to make intervention in the market. So non-interventionist policy used to be followed by the government till 1929. Now, what happened in 20, 1929, there was a great economic recession. It was a great economic depression, not recession. It was a depression. 